And we're back with more Shaq News Awards. We're doing a brand new award this year because uh, we think this is an important category that was underrepresented here at Shaq News. Uh, even though we did give Person of the Year to someone who has been uh, fighting the good fight uh, for this last year, uh, Steven Spawn over at Able Gamers. He was our Person of the Year at Shaq News t- in 2020. Who He's really been a, a leader in driving the industry towards making games accessible for everyone, all sorts of styles of play. Uh, so yeah, in the spirit of honoring Steven uh, last year, we were like, you know what? We need a category for this. And it really felt like 2021 was a year uh, where game companies finally heard the calls for better accessibility settings. One trend that I saw was at launch, like right when the game starts, being able to go straight into the accessibility menus. That was something that had been kind of left out in the past uh, that seems to be coming a standard. Um, So I don't want to single out any one individual developer for this, but it does seem to be a best practice that is now being accepted and used uh, by a lot of different studios. I just think that's a good thing in general because uh, talking to people who use different inputs or, uh, you know, maybe have to map their buttons differently. Being able to do that right when the game starts is hugely important, uh, especially if you don't know what the start button is on your on your gamepad before you start or whatever interface device you're using. So, yeah, shout out to everyone who's putting in that effort. I know it's not easy to do that, but and it may not be up to the vision of some of the art directors who want to have some flashy splash screen or something, but I think it really helps a lot of people play your game, so it's it's important. Uh, there were a couple games that I think deserve not uh, recognition, and that, even just companies in general that I think might deserve recognition in this category. So I'm going to kick it off with a nomination for Forza Horizon 5. Uh, I think the game's done a pretty amazing job at accessibility, but also representation uh, of different people in the game. Granted, no matter what you create your character to look like, they all sound British, so that's kind of lame. But outside of that, having prosthesis available, uh, different gender identities available, and a host of different accessibility options. And also uh, the company listening, or the devs are listening for feedback and and working to improve it. uh, uh, I think is Playground Games has done an amazing job this year uh, with Forza Horizon 5 from a accessibility standpoint. So I want to get that nomination out there. Uh, Chris has nominated Rift Apart. Uh, Ozzy, I don't know if you could speak to that at all. I can but... absolutely speak to that. And I actually threw a link in general from our mm-hmm. friends at Can I Play This that actually go into the gaggle of options for accessibility in terms of in-game stuff like uh, like hovering and combat and whether the camera follows you. Uh, can you slow the game down for people with cognitive disabilities? Like, there's so much that they've done and i went into the game myself to look at it and i'm i was kind of blown away by the wealth of options including simplified controls for people with uh with with disabilities and i absolutely was was really impressed by how much they offered so good on insomniac for that Mm -hmm. uh now i'm I'm checking out this uh can i play that accessibility awards winner list those folks do some awesome job over there Uh, some awesome jobs over there. Uh, I want to mention Ubisoft in general. Uh, I feel like their games took a step forward this year when it comes to accessibility. Far Cry 6, uh, Riders Republic, uh, and this goes back to what I was saying about standardization. It really feels like somewhere in Ubisoft they have decided all of our games are going to strive for the highest accessibility standards. And even if you didn't like Far Cry 6 or it wasn't your favorite in the series, it's definitely the most accessible we've seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I, on a point about Ratchet and Clank, I want to make Ozzy the lowest difficulty setting in that. I think speaks to what you're talking about, where you can't die, yeah, uh, in in that mode, and uh, that's looked down upon by some devs, some some players. But but the, for a game world. like Ratchet and Clank that you're going to give to a little kid, like that's absolutely necessary. Yeah, and I, I feel like there's other ways that. Like, you know, Nintendo addresses this sort of thing uh, where there are, uh, in Bowser's Fury, for instance, you can select how much Bowser Jr. is going to help you. Uh, In other Mario games, they always have that white Tanuki feather that appears if you're really 
if you're stinking it up on a level, <laughs> they just give you a little spawn of like, here's this thing that's going to help you. So like, I do think that there are ways to do it, uh, ways to make a game easier that don't necessarily require easy mode, right? Uh, but I do think that adding an easy mode to Ratchet and Clank definitely made it more accessible to people. And it's like a, you don't like you don't have to use the grind assist or the flight assist, but they're there, and they're mm -hmm. there for young players. They're there for people who can't necessarily get around that sort of thing. somebody who never plays. Like, and that's important. You, that's mm -hmm. how you get bigger audiences. That's how you yeah. get more people experiencing your game. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I think Ratchet and Clank's definitely a good nomination there by uh, Chris. I think I want to point out the way you brought up Ubisoft uh, mm -hmm. to give them some credit as well for um, making the information available beforehand. I know with Far Cry 6, I want to say it was like five or six months before the game came out, they already had a list of some accessibility options from the start. So folks who actually, you know, have to wait for that kind of information before paying for a game, uh, they already knew what was going to be available to them beforehand, which I think a lot more games should should do ahead of time instead of having to wait for someone to purchase and, and play through the game. And that messaging directly to the accessibility community is really smart because you start a conversation if you are missing something uh, that you can add it down the road. And it, it seems like these companies have that kind of appetite to make sure that if we miss something, we're going to try to make it in there. Uh, I will, and this game is still in early access or Xbox game preview right now, but Grounded, uh, I think did an amazing job with that, with the removal of spiders. Uh, if you are arachnophobia, if you suffer from arachnophobia, uh, they did early playtesting where people were like, oh, your game has giant spiders in it? I'm out. And they're like, oh, crap, we're going to put this right in the menu at the very beginning of the game. It says, if you're afraid of spiders, we're going to turn them into like a green or a blue ball or something. I kind of wish uh, Psychonauts had gone that extra mile and done the same thing with the teeth. Because yeah. I know they give you the warning, but like sometimes the warning is just enough to be like, eh, I'm out. Yeah, the warning is kind of off-putting to some people. Like, if you are afraid of the dentist or or, or teeth extraction, or you I mean, I don't know, I don't know how you necessarily hide it, because yeah. you know, but like, still, well, like, I feel like could have gone a little, a little something more. Mm -hmm. Dis disclaimers are also really easy to gloss over. You can easily miss that. Yeah, point. yeah, and but you know, I will say that their disclaimer is pretty clear. Where it's like, if you yeah. are uncomfortable. With stories about mental illness, you shouldn't play this game. Yeah. Uh, so, I appreciate a company telling you straight up not to play their game. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, uh, yeah, but yeah, to your point, Ozzy, it would have been very challenging for that studio to probably implement something that would remove every instance of gross teeth. <laughs> I want to um, give a shout out to Resident Evil Four VR here. Um, yeah. The moment you start up that game, new game. It gives you a step-by-step -step tutorial of building you that the uh, the comfort level to your liking. And what I like about the way it sets it up is that it isn't just like, here are the options, here's an explanation what it, of what it do. You can look off to the right side and there's a panel there where, it's at, where it actually shows you a video of your option being demonstrated. So you have a better idea of what you're in for. Mm -hmm. And I really I really appreciate that. Resident Evil 4 is full of uh, parts where it really could have been a dreadful sort of roller coaster of 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 keep a, keep that barf bag near. And they really went out of their way to like make it the most padded roller coaster that it was that it could possibly be. I think it's important to mention like comfortability in VR is an element of accessibility because there's people who still get simulator sickness all these years later. And yeah, it that game could have been really bad if it made people nauseous and they, they went above and beyond. It seems like they borrowed some of the same things that Alex did last year when it came to comfortability. Uh, I think one of the most important things in VR is when elevation change occurs to not have it be drastic. Um, mm -hmm. Having you almost float to the ground is way less jarring uh, than those drastic elevation changes that we saw in games like Hover Junkers when Vive launched all those years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, because VR sickness sucks, and it is is a giant barrier in front of a game succeeding. So it sounds like they did a good job on that front. They really did. 
It's not that accessible though, because you need a Facebook account to play the game. Anyway, mm-hmm. <laughs> sorry, I can. I was trying not to. Fair enough. Armature right. did a good job. That's what. Yeah, I'll they say. did a great job. No yeah. question. Um, are there any other nominees for this category? We have we have four solid ones here, and I know we kind of bashed Ubisoft together and just to to one big thing. Uh, cause I, I really do think like it's across the board this year from their games. Uh, and it seems like something that they've been working towards for a while. And yeah, I, I once again, here I am talking about Riders Republic. <clears throat> it has very, very good accessibility. So. Just a judge standing in front of the staff talking, once again, talking about Riders Republic. Uh yeah no it's it's got a lot of good stuff built in. And you know I, me, I'm not one to like sit here and uh, praise Ubisoft all day. Long. Oh no no no, <laughs> I'm 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 about to back you up, man. I'm, okay, well, yeah. Sad. I mean, they really it, it just shows how much companies in general are thinking about this now. And yeah, Ubisoft really stepped it up this year uh, across the board. Even rep even with representation like uh, Chorizo is a, a, a disabled dog in a mm-hmm. in a wheelchair and it's one of your one of your available sidekicks uh mm-hmm. in the game you know uh i think that's that's worth noting um yeah it's it it, it, it writers republic like it starts off and right away it's like all text to speech the minute you get in it's like informing you where to go and how to do it and how to turn options on and off immediately before you even get into the game. And it's like, before we start, here's everything that you can adjust. Please adjust it how you want to adjust it, and then we'll move forward. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not like you can't go back and readjust it later, but just starting off on that foot, being like, okay, before we even get into this, you're not going to have to go find any menus or stuff like that to figure out how this game is going to accommodate you. Just go just start it up. We'll take you through it, and we'll get you in there. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that's the that's the right way to approach it. Yeah, and uh, we didn't really we mentioned it with Forza, but Xbox also uh, offered the uh, prosthetic choices in your Halo Infinite avatars as well. Uh, so right. that might be a trend going forward too. It's being more inclusive. Uh, it's just kind of across the board. Uh, and then, yeah, I want to mention uh, once again, shout out to our friends at Can I Play This? Uh, the deaf and hard of hearing accessibility category that they mentioned also mentions Far Cry 6 and uh, Back for Blood. You know, we kind of left Back for Blood out of this, but Back for Blood has some very solid accessibility settings as well. Uh, yeah, this is. I like how they break it down. They have several categories over on their website. AAA excellence, indie excellence, best for deaf, hard of hearing people, blind and low vision. I will say I'm seeing Ratchet and Clank show up on a lot of these. Uh, so Insomniac definitely put a lot of effort here. This is a good category. I'm glad we're doing this. Uh, and I hope it spawns further conversation. I hope it incentivizes devs to keep taking the time uh, to put these sorts of features in their games. Uh, so, anyone else have a nomination, or should we get to vote? Get to oh. vote. Hey, Chris voted for Ratchet and Clank. Uh, I'm gonna abstain for now. I'll um, I'm gonna go with Forza. Give it to Forza. Bill, uh, it's one of those categories where it's a celebration of everybody that took strides, but I'm gonna go with Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. Uh, Z? I'm going to say Ratchet and Clank. EJ? Oh, God. Um, I'll go with Forza. Greg? Let's do Ratchet and Clank. Donovan? Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart. Danny? You know, I was actually prepared to go with Forza, but the more I was looking at this uh, Can I Play This list, I was I was looking it up while we were deliberating. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they, they they added a game speed feature, I think it's actually really cool. So yep. You can actually slow the game down from 70 to 50 to 30%. Um, 
which I think is an awesome feature for people that may not be able to play at the full speed of everything going on. Um, and they've only that as one of their most innovative uh, things they'd like to see more games implement. So I think that's something worth uh, giving accessibility uh, award to you. So is that Forza or Ratchet and Clank? Ratchet. Ratchet's doing that. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I wasn't... You had mentioned Forza. You hadn't rat- mentioned Ratchet. Uh, um, David. Yeah, I'll go Ratchet and Clank. Well, well, I guess I can look at Sam's vote. If he had one. I'm guessing he might have voted for Forza. Uh, he didn't vote for anything. Damn. Let's just assume he voted for Halo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seems fair, right? Yeah. And yeah, I'm going to vote for Ratchet and Clank just based on uh, the scope of all the options that they put into the game. Uh, and I, I go back to the difficulty setting. If you're going to have difficulty settings in your game, like at all, you should have one where you don't die. Sure. I, yeah, I totally agree. Like, that's, I think, uh, a huge thing. And then to Denny's point, I think Chris may have made this point in past things, uh, that game speed is hugely important for people who have cognitive disabilities. Uh, the stuff that they've done for deaf, deaf and blind and hard of hearing gamers, I think, is also impressive. All these studios deserve praise for what they've done this year. Uh, but yeah, I think Ratchet and Clank's well deserved this award. So the first ever award for outstanding achievement in accessibility for the year 2021 is going to go to Insomniac Games for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Congratulations. Ratchet, we need your help. Nefarious. <laughs> 